Hi, and welcome back to The Wine Draw. I'm Renee, your wine enthusiast and host for this episode. Today we're going to take a look at a single varietal of grape known as Zinfandel. And today along with me, we have Taylor, The Wine Draw's personal chef. Hi, Taylor. Hello, Renee. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Ready to sip? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and cook? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. A varietal des describes a single grape opposed to wines that are considered blended wines which are made from several different grapes together to produce a certain flavor texture color um, today taylor and i will be discussing and going over and um, introducing you to several types of zinfandels um, zinfandels range from a white zinfandel mm -hmm. to what we know as ancient zinfandel so Taylor, let's start this conversation. <laughs> let's discover Zinfandel. Zinfandel is truly an American way of life. It has advanced from a rag to riches story grown in over 50,000 acres of U.S. soil. It's an original American wine grape. The vines on which they grow can be traced back to be over 100 years. The earliest record is in 1883, where they were first planted in California and are still produced abundantly in the California regions of Simona Valley, Napa, Dry Creek Valley, and Lodi. Zin shows two styles, one from warm inland regions, the other from cool to warm regions where the vines experience some maritime influence. The former tends to be higher in alcohol, the latter a little more elegant, but neither is better, it's all a matter of taste. The vines originally planted in the mid-1800s are still producing and are known as ancient zins. These vines do not produce an abundance of grapes, maybe one or two tons to the acre, but the quality is superb and the fruit is of truly incredible quality. Zin vines have a lifespan equivalent to that of a healthy human being. Many of the oldest Zinfandel vines are over 100 years old. These are the wise old men of the vineyards, the elders. For the first 10 years of a vine, it's a child, sassy and young, and full of vigor and rather uncontrolled. You can see this in the younger vines planting throughout California. They have shoots popping out every which way. Enter the teenage years of a Zinfandel vine, and like human teens, they are a bit out of control while they figure out their role in life. But with the right coddling and advice, force upon it by pruning, it starts to figure out its place in the world. As Zinfandel vines enter middle age or old vines, the vines have settled into a pattern of consistency and higher quality, like us humans do between 30 and 50. For many vines, these are the golden years, pumping out a great grape without needing as much attention as when they were younger. A well-tended 30 to 50 year old Zinfandel is prized for this combination of consistency and productivity. When Zinfandel came on the scene in the 80s, it was known as white Zinfandel, inexpensive and sweet. White Zinfandel is not a grape variety, but a method of processing Zinfandel grapes. In essence, to make a white Zinfandel, the winemaker peels the red skins off the red Zinfandel grapes. Without those skins, the resulting wine is lighter in color, sweet in flavor, and without the harsh, rich flavors found in red wines. White Zinfandel is a pale rose wine colored that's very sweet. It has gained immensely in popularity since the 80s, and sadly is often looked down upon by real wine drinkers because of its youth and sweetness. This is sad because every wine has its place in the grand palette of flavors. Yes, white Zinfandel is light and sweet, 
but this is perfection in some situations. Say a hot summer day with a crisp fruit salad. It's also a great way for non-wine drinkers to get used to flavors in wine without being put off by a heavily tainted monster wine. And thank the wine gods for White Zinfandel, for it saved many of these old vineyards from destruction. From the mid-70s into the early 80s, there was so little demand for the true Zinfandel that many of the great old vines we cherish today were set to be removed and replaced with the more popular Chardonnay and Merlot grapes. But the demand for the next new thing gave many producers a market for those grapes and a reason to keep the old vines in the ground. Okay, hi Taylor. Hi, Hershey. Now we're back and we're going to talk about, or no, we're not going to talk, we're going to taste. We're going to look at different Zinfandels mm -hmm. in their stages. And we're first going to start off with um, White Zinfandel. Okay. And as we know, White Zinfandel is the um, grape that is from young vines. It's mm -hmm. made by um, extracting the grape from the skin, okay. so which gives it that blush color. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's pour. Let me do for you first. So Zinfandel, white Zinfandel has been known to be the sweet wine. Um, and it has a very high alcohol content, um, which made it popular mm -hmm. amongst people in the earlier years, um, <laughs> especially those who were um, first starting out and experimenting yep. with, with drinking. Um, and it was also inexpensive. Uh, one of the that leading is. producers of White Zinfandel is Behringer's. Okay, okay and this okay. is what we're drinking now. So um, let's swirl, sniff. What do you smell? Get apples. Mmm, a lot of fruit. It is very sweet smelling. It's very it sweet smelling. It smells like a Moscato. Okay, should be served chilled. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yes, it has a very high alcohol content. So just in this first sip, what would be something you would pair with it? What would be a food that you might I would do something uh, very light with this. Um, okay. So not like a dinner. Even if, I mean, if it was a dinner, I'd say like more like a salad. Okay. With maybe a, a white fish. Okay. Or chicken. Would you have a um, balsamic dressing or would you, vinaigrette, or would you do it with more of, um, I don't know, a light salad dressing, like a creamy salad dressing? Oh no, I wouldn't do creamy. Wouldn't do creamy. That'd be too heavy for this one. Okay. I do a light vinaigrette for this. All right. This does definitely does remind me of our senior year in college. <laughs> we, you know, we're gonna be adults soon, so we should probably start drinking wine. Face. Okay. And at a table, huh? <laughs> and out of a glass. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. this is this is um, our white Zinfandel. And as we move on, you will see that there is going to be a totally different experience okay. going on with red. Okay. Now that we've tasted our young Zinfandel, uh -huh. um, now let's go into the m more mature part of okay. Zinfandel. We talked about Zinfandel being um, a single grape that has uh, many, that comes from many vines. Mm -hmm. um, vines that are ancient, vines that are old, vines that are middle-aged. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so Zinfandel mm -hmm. is like a human. It, it ages, mm -hmm. okay? And with age comes experience. With experience comes quality. Okay. Um, and not necessarily do you get quantity okay. as you grow old. So we're going to try um, the Zinfandel's cousin grape, Permitivo. Did I pronounce that right? Permitivo? Permitivo, thank you. Um, which is the Italian version of the Zinfandel grape, okay? okay? Let's 
So here we go. And unlike with um, white wine, we usually swirl it so that it will aerate. And air brings out the body of the grape and of the taste. So this you know, one even had a different sound coming out. Of the did bottle. it? Okay. All sound, right. Sound heavier. And and it's colorful. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, that means that it was left in its skin mm -hmm. as it was produced into a grape. So mm. I get a I get plum but I get smoke. Yeah, like I have it has a smoky flavor. And it's a lot more, has a lot more body oh, yeah. than we yeah. smelled with the, the white. I like this one. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay, why? What, what? Well, like you said, it's like people that mature. Okay. It is, <laughs> this doesn't bring me back to, oh, let's just buy a bottle of wine. It's you know, take, you take some more time to actually pick out which one okay. you like. And for me, it's like, okay, I can sit down and savor this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, hold the glass, keep it in my hand, have a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it does taste like uh, a wine that I would drink alone. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah. So. It's not too dry. No, not at all. It has a nice cherry color to it, mm -hmm. and I do chase cherries on yep. the back end of I it. I do get them on the back end. So we've tasted two types of Zinfandels. Yep. Um, one is the Italian cousin. <laughs> uh, they both are from a single grape, mm -hmm. okay? And this one happens to be younger than a lot, okay? So. Oh, okay. As we show over here, we have several bottles to display of wine. Mm -hmm. And closer to you, down on the bottom, is Cigar, which is a middle age, meaning that we talked about that, meaning that it's about 50 to 80 year old vine that it was produced from, that the grape was produced on. Then we have the Oak Ridge up at the top, which is known as an ancient Zinfandel, meaning that the vine is over a hundred years old and is still producing. So you know that it has quality, but there's not a lot of quantity coming from that vine. And then you have the hobo over there, which is another middle age, which is about 30 to 50 year old vine that it comes from. Now, Taylor, we've tasted. Yes, we yeah. got an idea of what we're working with here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put this wine in your hands and have you pair something with it that we can enjoy. What are we going to make? We're going to make uh, lamb sliders. Mm, okay. And we're going to pair it with the red instead okay. of the white. Okay. Okay. So let's get started. So now, Taylor, let's get started on our lamb patties. What's going in them? Okay, so we're gonna have ground lamb. Okay. It's just is lamb your favorite choice of meats? Lamb's not my actually my favorite, but I do like the gaminess of it against the uh, red wine. Okay. So then we're gonna use. I have found and fell in love with this one particular uh, line of spices called Spice Cave. So this one has. Um, Garlic, onions, parsley, Himalayan pink salt, chili pepper flakes, orange peel okay. in it. So we're going to use about, I don't usually measure. So okay. <laughs> usually <laughs> about <laughs> two tablespoons of it. Okay. Um, and to pair with that one, we're going to use um, another spice from the Spice Cave that is garlic powder, onion granules, um, and Himalayan pink salt again. So another about roughly two tablespoons. And so we're using about a pound of lamb? Yep. Okay, yep. all right. And so the, buying spices already mixed is for those of us who are in a rush after yep. after yep. work and... Oh yeah, and even if, you know, you're not in a rush, but you kind of, you know what kind of flavor you want. Okay. And you don't have those on hand, a pre-mixed spice always works. Okay. So with clean hands, mm -hmm. you just mix it all together. And if you could do me a favor, sure, and 
you can take this knife mm -hmm. and you can can you just cut a little bit, a little pat of butter and put it in the pan for me. Okay. The pan now is on low. Mm -hmm. um, didn't want it to be on for too long. <laughs> And one too high because you don't want to burn the lamb. Now I'm heavy handed. Now, so not Martha. that much butter. <laughs> not that much. But half that. Yep. That's okay. Perfect. All right. So butter is your choice of um, oil or? <laughs> Again, no, it's not my choice, but what's on hand usually it will work. Uh, okay. Oil, butter. Butter, I usually, I can gauge it better with uh, the amount. Mm -hmm. um, an open spot of oil makes me a little nervous. So. Salted or unsalted? I usually use unsalted. Okay. And with anything, with cooking, with baking, I always just use the unsalted. I don't like the extra saltiness if I know my spices has it in there. Oh, okay, okay. All so right. once your meat is mixed, we're gonna take about. <laughs> I can you tell I don't measure? <laughs> this is so we're gonna a do pinch a pinch of that, a pinch of that, <laughs> pinch of this. So we'll do about a third of a, a cup. If you use if some people, you know, they use their measuring cups to do it, and some people use ice cream scoops, I usually use a medium-sized ice cream scoop. Okay. Roll it in a ball, mm -hmm. um, and then flatten it out. So we're just gonna put that straight in the pan. We may want to turn it. Turn if it you up. can turn it up to medium, that would work perfectly. So again, you're just gonna keep that rough measuring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can kind of make them to your. Oh yeah. However you, how big you want them. Yes. Whatever your appetite is for that day. Yeah. <laughs> that one might be a little bigger than third of a cup. But I mean, hey, what are you going to do? So we may actually get four out of these, four fairly similar size. Um, so we'll say it's a fourth of a cup. <laughs> and I know sliders are, or small burgers are the new thing now. And a okay. lot of us are used to just having a real nice, juicy burger yeah. or so patty. And I mean, it's also better if you're trying to watch your portions. Okay. Um, because the smaller patties usually have what the recommended <laughs> serving amount is, um, as opposed to like a half pound burger. So, okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with a half pound burger. So now you like lamb. You're saying that it's gamey for the type of wine that mm -hmm. we're tasting. Is there any other type of meat that you would suggest other than lamb? I, in order, uh -huh. I would say uh, ground bison okay. first. Um, ground bison is also a leaner red meat than ground beef. So even your 93.7 uh, ground beef is heavier than ground bison. So I, that's, that's usually my favorite. It's not always cost effective. Um, so when, you know, you want the patties, but you can't afford or don't want to spend all that money, ground beef works just fine. Ground lamb is good. Okay. All right. But for a wet red wine like this one, I would definitely suggest a, a red meat. Okay. So we're gonna let that go for a little bit. So just for some toppings for our patties while they go, while they cook, we're gonna do some sliced onions, some sauteed onions and mushrooms. Uh, the mushrooms have been washed already and they're sliced white mushrooms. You can do portobello, you can do any other, other kind. This is just what happened to be on sale. Sale is always a good thing. <laughs> that is um, true. Especially when you're investing more, so, more of the money on your, mm -hmm. on your beverage of choice. Um, and mm. we're also gonna use crumbled feta cheese. Okay. So while those go, I'm just gonna slice this up a little bit. Now I was, um reading someplace that oyster mushrooms, mm -hmm. when they're sauteed, they have a bacon flavor. Really? Yeah, so I don't know if I would put lamb with bacon, but, or a bacon flavor, but I just thought that was an interesting. Hmm. I've actually never had oyster mushrooms. I My goal is to try a bunch of different variations of mushrooms. Okay. Um, but no, I haven't had that one yet, so I can't attest to that, whether or not. Um, but if it, I mean, I, if I want bacon flavor, I'd rather just the bacon. Have the bacon. So, <laughs> I mean, that's just my own personal thing. I know they do say that portobellos have a have a heavier, beefier flavor. So, mm. if, you know, for people who are vegetarian or vegan um, or just want to try something different, people will have portobello sliders or portobello um, burgers. Burgers, okay. So we're just going to take the sliced mushrooms and just kind of put it in the pan with the... 
So I noticed, Taylor, that you are not a big um, oil or butter person. No. You find more of your flavor in the food itself. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm, I mean, I'm, it's also a more of a health conscious thing as well. Okay. Because um, I'm heavy handed. And I have had, that's one thing I had to do is teach myself not to be heavy handed when okay. it comes to oil and butter. And so I won't ever fry anything. Okay. I mean, I, I enjoy <laughs> fried food, but I just don't make Use it myself. It. Okay. No. So then I, we're going to want to cut some of these mushrooms in half, some of the bigger ones. They smell good. So now I want to um, also say that the wine drawer will have Taylor's recipes and ingredients up on, on the wine drawer. So if anybody wants to choose their, their Zinfandel of choice and pair it with lamb burgers, go to the wine drawer to get the recipe along with the name of the wine that we're drinking with um, our lamb patties. And if you have anything that you think would go well, please by all means put it up on the wine drawer so that others, you can share it with others. So how long should, should um, your burgers cook in order to get them to that um, done consistency? It all kind of really depends on your burners. Um, I know some stoves get a lot hotter than others. Okay. Um, Mine, when I'm at home, they usually take about eight to ten minutes. Okay. Now, do you prefer um, gas, electric, or grilled? Which is your preference? Ideally, <laughs> I would do grilled. Okay. However, I have, I have grown up on gas, <laughs> so that is what I use, and that's what I know, and that's what I like. It also, I mean, that also is easier for me to gauge a fire. Mm-hmm. Um, electric is nice, but... It's just not, I don't know it, so it's kind of like second nature to me. I know that I would like gas, mm -hmm. um, but since I don't have gas in my house, I seem to use a lot of cast iron, which evenly spreads the heat when I cook. Nice. <laughs> um, there was a woman I ran into one day, actually, that told me a woman only needs four pots or pans in her kitchen. Okay. Um, she told me, well, you need a 10-inch cast iron pan, a 12-inch cast iron pan, a pot to boil pasta, and a slow cooker. Oh, I can get rid of a lot of stuff in my kitchen. Me too. <laughs> me too. And I, I need to add those cast iron skillets. But that's what she told me. And so, I mean, she, see, she said it's been working for us. So. Okay. It's called downsizing in my house. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. So after your patties are cooked, and your onions and your mushrooms are sauteed. It smells amazing. It does. So it we're, does. We're going to do, you want to just put the patty right on the plate and dress it up a little bit. We're going to put some of the onions and mushrooms on top. Mm. Add a couple more mushrooms to this one. And on top of it, I, my favorite cheese, and one of the only cheeses I can <laughs> eat since I'm lactose intolerant, is feta. Okay. Um, and I often buy the pre-crumbled. I don't do the blocks. I mean, if I want to be fancy, I'll do the blocks, but if not, mm, it's fine. That looks good. Just kind of drop some right on top. So that one, you can take that one. Thank you. Let me just grab another patty. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. Patty first, mushroom and onions. And then some feta. Okay. Here's your fork and your napkin. Oh, thank you. And can I pour you a little more wine? Yes. Okay. Yes. One thing about feta is it sticks to your hands a lot, so you may want to keep a napkin close by. <laughs> So now this looks good. Oh yeah. So we're going to try so our turn our pan off. While we're we're going to try our lamb patty. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of us who 
don't really have to watch our weight. We can put it between two slices of bread <laughs> or bud. And um, we're going to taste it with our Zinfandel. This is a treat, Taylor. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. I'm a lamb person, too. It pairs well with that. Oh, it does. It, it does. brings out the richness in the, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of- It brings of, the richness out in the wine and the earthy flavor in the lamb. And then the smoky flavor that the wine has pairs really nicely yeah. with the lamb. I like that one. This is really good. <laughs> this is gonna be one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> and another um, tip that I'm going to give is that you're the master of the food. And I like that quick and easy. So I find that goes with a full body Zinfandel. Mm -hmm. It's some um, popcorn. Um, oh. Sprinkled with Old Bay seasoning. I've never. My sister and mother are popcorn lovers. But I don't is, think they'd ever do that. <laughs> but this is really good. So you just take it in front of the television mm -hmm. with your glass, watch your favorite movie or your favorite series, and keep it going. So That's interesting. It I is. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> I'll have to have my sister try it and let me know. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Taylor, I want to thank you for doing this being a part of this oh, today, no no sharing problem. your expertise on food. And for all of you who have watched us, thank you for joining us and watch us again on The Wine Draw. Have a good one.